Okay, students, hi. Uh, this week, I have something special for you. Another black and white silent movie. This one was a hit in 1928, and the title of the film is The Crowd. It was an MGM picture, cue the lion, and it was directed by a guy who pretty much everyone's forgotten about by now, but he was a very famous guy in his day, a guy named King Vidor. You've already seen some of King Vidor's work. He directed some of the scenes from The Wizard of Oz. You remember the black and white scenes at the beginning of Oz when Dorothy is in Kansas and singing Somewhere Over the Rainbow, right? Well, those scenes were directed by King Vidor. He directed many Hollywood films throughout his career, most of them for MGM. Now, I'm sorry to say that the copy that I'm letting you view is about the best quality I could find. Take a look here. This one here, it was like one of those Go Hyakuen Amazon videos, you know? I mean, it's it seems that nobody's gotten around yet to remastering the crowd, like they have remastered the General or remastered the Gold Rush, some of these other terrific movies that we've studied. Anyway, before you sit down to watch the movie, let me give you some interesting points to know about the crowd. First, King Vidor conceived and directed the film, and he purposely avoided putting famous stars in the movie because he wanted the film to have this kind of feeling that the characters were nobody, you know, that they were nobody important. He was really looking for authenticity with his cast. The character, John Sims, the lead character of the movie, has some traits that make him very American. First of all, John was the number one given name to male children in 1900, the year that John Sims is born, and Mary was the number one name given to newborn girls at the same time. Our hero, John Sims, is born on the 4th of July, which is America's birthday. So that means that he and America share a birthday. And John Sims is relentlessly optimistic about his chances of being successful in life. You know, it's the kind of dreamy optimism that especially Americans have. Next, the film mixes in hidden camera shots of actual crowds walking about in New York City. New York City was the most populous city in the U.S. in 1928, the year that this movie was released. For Americans in the 1920s, New York was the image of city life in America, at a moment in time when just over 50% of Americans were now living in cities. King Vider's cinematography was celebrated by critics. I mean, that, uh, that shot of zooming into the office building miniature that reveals the office inside, that dissolve into a massive set of anonymous businessmen doing their jobs, that is just a real awesome look. And the final scene of the pullback from the audience in the theater reminds us that the stars of the movie are just everyday average people lost in a sea of hundreds of or thousands of average people. Also, the close-ups of the characters, although kind of melodramatic by today's standards, they were very powerfully intimate and a real nice attempt by King Vider to show us the pain that the characters were going through during their family crises. Now, let's talk about money. The film was a modest financial success. King Vidor had done some better money makers, but this movie, The Crowd, did make money. It was also somewhat of a critical success. Some critics liked the, quote, powerful analysis 
of the couple's struggle for existence in the big city. Another critic said it was too long and boring. Now, my take, I agree that it's long and it's dull in some places, and I don't like the overly dramatic facial expressions of the characters sometimes, but I really do appreciate the story that King Vider is telling. You know, uh, here's Johnny as a little kid, and his father says, you can do anything, you know. You have the love and support of your parents. They encourage you. Uh, you know, he believes that he's going to be successful or famous or whatever. You know, he believes that he's good enough to compete. And in the end, it's not exactly that simple. Uh, John Sims' life is a mix of happiness and tragedy, just like everybody else's, you know. So for me, you know, the theme is you have to take life as it comes. You know, sometimes life is great and sometimes life is really terrible. I think one thing that we can say about uh, the crowd is that uh, the director and writer, King Vitor, uh, I, th I think that, you know, he was really going out of his way to do something very different in cinema. Um, most people were doing very happy comedies. I mean, you saw uh, The General and you saw uh, Chaplin's work in the mid and uh, late 20s. You saw Clara Bow in, as the It Girl, also in the late 1920s. But, you know, King Vitor's work here is so realistic. It's not just escape fantasy, but it's a story of uh, heartbreak and uh, the, the possibilities of having your hopes destroyed during your, your, your life. You know, when I see this movie, The Crowd, I, I, I think of it as kind of a, a study of survival in, in, in the face of lost hope, you know, losing yourself in the crowd. King Vitor got the Academy Award nomination for Best Director for the Crowd, but he lost the Oscar to somebody else for a movie that nobody remembers today, you know. But history has remembered the crowd. It was on the list of the first 25 movies selected in 1989 by the Library of Congress to the National Film Registry, the same year that Snow White, The Wizard of Oz, and The General were inducted. So please enjoy The Crowd from 1928.